from LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight, presented by UK Federal Credit Union. Good evening. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Maggie Davis. And I'm Keith Farmer. Hope everyone enjoyed their nice long weekend. Yes, and hope you're recovering nicely as well. <laughs> yes. And coming up tonight, Tom Leach will join the show. Plus, we have a great story on a UK super fan and an update on Chris Oates. And I had the chance to talk with incoming freshman Jordan Anthony. He's going to be a dual sport athlete at UK this fall. You're going to hear from him in just a few minutes. And it was a fairly eventful weekend for the UK football team. Even had the big dog putting out yes. some statements on Twitter today. So Tom Leach is with us now to talk about all of it. For tonight's Big Blue Story, presented by CHI St. Joseph Health. Tom, thanks so much for being here. How was your 4th of July? It was uh, nice to have a couple of days of a break. So uh, <laughs> now we uh, wait till by the time we roll up, roll up on the next holiday, we will be into football season. Oh, yes, that's true. Hey, Tom, we read an interesting article on Will Levis over the weekend. National Associated Press writer uh, Ralph D. Russo wrote, Quote, Kentucky QB Levis balances NIL gains with long-term goals, end quote. He was talking about how Levis has navigated the NIL landscape so far, what kinds of deals and agencies he signed with, how he builds his brand on social media, all while keeping football the main focus. Pretty cool seeing Will used as a national example of how to make that NIL work for you and your goals, don't you think? Absolutely. You think back to where we were a year ago when the transfer portal kicked in and the NIL stuff, just one year ago. And Will Levis had already, uh, I think it was getting ready to come here. I don't know if he had arrived at this point or not, but um, he is like the, the poster child for the, the best case scenario for all of it, because starting with the transfer portal, here's a guy who's buried on the depth chart. Clearly, his coaches at, at Penn State uh, didn't think he was their guy. And that probably wasn't going to change. They were going to try to recruit over him. And so why shouldn't he have a chance to go find a place where he could play? And he did, and he's playing really well. Mm -hmm. It's working out well True. for him. And yeah. obviously, the NIL stuff, he is knocking that out of the park, like the partnership with Claiborne Farms. So he's doing some creative things. He understands the social media part of it. So... You know, he has not, I don't think, had any missteps, and it's all been very positive for him and UK. Yeah, it is crazy to see how much mm -hmm. it's all changed in just a year. Yeah. And, of course, yeah. speaking about NIL, the big dog, Kentucky's recruiting coordinator, Vince Marrow, is backing his athletic director on the way Kentucky is handling NIL. Vince tweeted, quote, I want to be very clear this is not about Mitch Barnhart. It's about people stepping up wanting to help. The NIL is changing college sports, and I do believe once people feel more educated, they will get involved. I believe Barnhart is one of the best ADs I've been around. Tom, what do you think about all this? I don't know what to think about uh, anything. It's all changing so quickly, so I think we just kind of all uh, try to hang on and see where this goes. I saw uh, Tim Brando, uh, this guy I've had on my radio show before. Mm -hmm. He's been covering college sports forever works for fox and i uh, saw tim at a recent tweet where he was optimistic this was all going to settle down and but that it might take you know uh several months to a year for that to happen and they get some structure to it and some of the things that um i think a, a lot of coaches and administrators maybe all coaches and administrators want the the thing is what's it going to be between now and then and when is then mm. and that's just uh an unknown it's uh that is i'm sure very frustrating not only for fans but uh, everybody involved in this tom last week the big 10 kind of shook things up uh, uh, with the conference realignment landscape when they added usc and ucla so all eyes are now on the sec for a response as those super conferences are kind of becoming a reality it seems like the acc is next on the chopping block rumors flying around that the sec is eyeing clemson florida state and miami that would take the league to 19 schools. Those are obviously the three big schools in terms of TV deals, but you think you'd like to see Louisville thrown in the mix there in order to keep the rivalry game in every sport? I don't know. I mean, I, I wonder, does South Carolina want Clemson to come into the league? Does oh, Florida right. want Florida State and Miami to come into the league? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, and if not them, then who? Um, I saw something. I don't know where. There's so many things that we all read and see these days. <laughs> Uh, somebody uh, had a post where uh, I think it was a writer that uh, uh, foresaw a uh, two 28 team leagues, four divisions of seven for each league, the Big Ten and the SEC. And when they when it got to that point, 
it was basically back to the SEC East. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All of this just yeah. for the SEC. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you never know. Let's, you let's know, switch gears for a minute, uh, Tom, because the schedule is, uh, yes, absolutely. And the basketball schedule is starting to take shape as well. We know which conference games will be at home, which ones will be on the road, which ones will be in both places. Looks like we'll see Florida, Tennessee, Auburn, LSU, and Arkansas inside Rupp Arena this year. We've talked about a lot of things with more questions than answers right now, Tom, to know who's coming to Rupp Arena has to be at least one thing you can be, be excited about, right? Yeah, well, and the other thing is that's interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting matchups on the schedule, mm -hmm. uh, but they moved the Notre Dame neutral site game back a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that means they're looking to add a home game on that second Saturday in December in between the game in London and the game in uh, New York in the CBS Sports Classic. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see who that uh, ends up being, what, what they can uh, put together. But uh, I'm sure they're trying to, because they could have just, you know, had Notre Dame there on a neutral site and had a good game, albeit not at home. So I'm assuming they're trying to land a, a quality home game for that uh, second Saturday in December. So that's one storyline I'm following. And I'm sure that as soon as they say it, we will know and we will talk about it. So, Tom, thank you so much, as always. Have a good week, guys. All Thanks. right, take care. Uh, Kentucky running back Chris Rodriguez pleaded guilty earlier today on DUI charges from when he was pulled over by police in May. Rodriguez will be required to pay a $200 fine plus court cost, and his license will be suspended for no more than six months. This marks the end of the legal proceedings with that. The uh, UK has not released an official statement. And Kentucky football player Chris Oates has been in Florida for the past several weeks where he's been receiving treatments that fit his needs. Mm -hmm. And his mom, Kim, has been keeping everyone updated on his progress on Twitter. Here's part of yesterday's video. So Chris has been working hard for 41 days now, but their time in Florida is coming to an end. Kim wrote, this is our final week here in Florida and it has served its purpose. My son has come a long way in these last two and a half months. We're so grateful for all of your prayers and your continued support and loving and encouraging words. We thank you, we love you all. Hashtag 22 Oats Strong. And if you'd like to donate to the Chris Oates Foundation, go to their website, 22oatsstrong.org. That's where you'll find more information and a link to donate. Remember, this foundation is to benefit Chris and his family, but the Oates family will also want to pay it forward to other young stroke victims and their families who need help financially during their own recovery process. Maggie, I know the BBNs loved watching Kim's videos of Chris over these past few months, but he still needs our help. Yes, absolutely. Coming up next on BBN Tonight, hear from Kentucky football player and track athlete yes. Jordan Anthony. My one-on-one -on -one interview with the two-sport athlete is right after this on BBN Tonight.